study about the classification of the immunity immunity is the most important chapter and we need to be thorough with this chapter competency for the today's class define and classify immunity innate immunity or the acquired immunity specific and non specific active or passive immunity uh, with some examples definition of the immunity it is the ability of the body to defend against invading agents i will repeat it once again it is the ability of the body to defend against invading agents it is called as immunity okay definition is over we will classify the immunity it is broadly classified into innate immunity or the non adaptive type of immunity acquired immunity or the adaptive type of immunity as their name suggests that innate so this is present by birth and acquired we will acquire uh, throughout our life sometimes uh, the uh, immunity may be artificial or the naturally acquired and in innate immunity which is non specific and relatively specific by the natural killer cells okay first we will go with the innate immunity or the non adaptive type of immunity and one more thing uh, the slightly i changed here the relatively specific defense by natural killer cells i included in this itself so there might not be much confusion while uh, making videos okay in non specific defense system mechanical defense chemical defense defense by natural killer cells that is slightly specific and then defense by phagocytic cells then defense by the inflammation and the fever first we will study about the mechanical defenses skin and the epidermis we know that skin is the largest organ in human in whole human body so this is most important and natural defense barrier of the body mucous membranes these are the mechanical traps for the organisms and they secrete some chemicals that inhibit the growth of the microorganisms mucus is present over the mucous membrane so and they they are especially lining the uh, tracts which are exposed outside or the external environment for example respiratory gastrointestinal or the genito urinary tracts hairs we usually don't give that much importance in our daily basis but they are so much important hairs these filter the microorganisms and prevent their entry into the body and we know that hairs uh, covered uh, covers our nostrils ears eyes anus urethra and the vagina you can see how uh, how tiny they are cilia uh, these are just hair like things that are present over the cell surface these filter the microorganisms and remove the dust and microbes from the upper respiratory tract so they beat the cilia towards the oral cavity so that uh, once uh, the mucus is moved towards the oral cavity we will spit it to the outside wall so that uh, we can remove those useless things from the respiratory tract tear uh, actually we cry we will get tears but it has some other roles it washes the microbes and dilutes the chemical substances produced by the microbes as we know we blink lot of times approximately a blink is around 0.025 seconds so this blink will spread the layer of the tear film throughout the eye and it helps us to uh, prevent the growth of the microbes and uh, it doesn't cause the dryness of the eye saliva it contains antimicrobial chemicals and washes the microbes from the oral cavity and involved in the maintaining the oral hygiene most of the times uh, by default we don't know actually we did this thing whenever we got hurt or got injuries on elbows or the knee uh, we used to apply our saliva over that surface that is because it has antimicrobial property 
urine the urine flow washes the microbes from the urinary tract as you know sometimes the urine flow will be fast or slow but definitely it washes the microbes from the urinary tract and the defecation along with the fecal matters some of the microbes are also washed from the lower GI tract and now the chemical defense the acidic pH of the skin stomach and the vagina these inhibit and kill the microbes and the lysozyme it's an enzyme it's secreted in saliva tear sweat and other body secretions and it has the antimicrobial activity complement proteins these facilitate the opsonization and the phagocytosis opsonization is the process where the microbe is made tasty for the phagocytes interferons these are secreted from the activated lymphocytes and these act as antiviral substances defense by the natural killer cells we can call it as relatively specific defense i am going to tell you why we will call it as relatively specific and why we include it under innate immunity these are the third category of the lymphocytes neither b nor t cells it is neither b or nor t cells it can kill a wide variety of microbes and the tumors uh, it is present usually in the spleen lymph nodes and the bone marrow and blood these recognize the antibody coated target cells and they kill them by the adcc adcc refers to the antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity which is more effective against the viruses and the tumor cells so why we include the natural killer cells under innate, innate immunity the first of all they do not require prior sensitization to kill microbes so they can kill naturally uh, without any prior sensitization they are the first line of defense against viral infections as you know these secrete the uh, interferons and all and they attack the cells that do not display proper markers uh, first you need to know that our cells have certain markers present over the cell membranes usually our immune cells recognize those uh, markers and they think that these are our own cells these are our own friends but if they are if the cell markers are defective or they are not present then they are going to kill the kill them uh, because they think that they are their enemies these natural killer cells are active against tumor cells for mainly against the malignant cells and these do not involve in the major histocompatibility complex for killing the microbes mhc is nothing but the major histocompatibility complex we are going to study that in the antigen presentation and cell mediated of the humoral immunity next the defense by the phagocytic cells uh, these uh, phagocytic cells are granulocytes monocytes and the macrophages these uh, these cause the phagocytosis and eventually kill the microorganisms monocytes are the macrophages nothing but when monocytes are in circulation they move to the tissue they are eventually forming the macrophages they are maturing to form the macrophages macrophages are of two types those wander among the wander in tissue and those are fixed to the tissues the wandering macrophages which are mobile in tissue fixed macrophages which are which are present at the specific site and these include to form the mononuclear phagocytes phagocyte system previously it was known as reticuloendothelium endothelial system but now they changed their name to the mononuclear phagocyte system the phagocytes is in brief here is the bacterium uh, receptors are there formation of the pseudopodia formation of the phagosome which contains the bacterium the lysosome which has a different lytic enzymes is fused with the phagosome to form the phagolysosome and these lytic enzymes are released 
uh, which are going to lyse the bacterium and there are, there are some degraded process the products which are excreted to the exocytosis process and depends by the inflammation and the fever okay what is inflammation it is the response of the tissue to the injury and this helps in killing the organisms and disposing them off uh, you must know that inflammation is a greater role uh, in our immune system and we will study it a lot in second year okay we will move to the fever now uh, as we know this is the basic sign of the infection because most of the time we experienced everyone will experience this fever uh, which pre it prevents the growth of the microorganisms and it is one of the protective phenomenon of our body next we will move to the acquired or the adaptive type of immunity as the word says adaptive as we grow we will acquire different types of infection as we acquire different types of infection our body immune system learns to defend them and this is a acquired immunity again we have naturally acquired and the artificially acquired type of immunity in those again active and the passive immunities in naturally acquired the active immunities are cellular and the humoral immunities and the passive immunity that we, we will get to get by our mother uh, those are iga via the placenta and iga via breastfeeding then in artificially acquired the active immunity uh, by vaccination so most of you heard that covid vaccines are available on covishield and the covaxins please take those vaccines because they involved in the artificially acquired immunity that helps us to fight the corona passive immunity uh, iv injections such as ntd uh, antibodies that we will give to the mother soon after the uh, first delay soon after her first delivery uh, which involved in the passive immunity of the artificially acquired type of immunity this is the small chart which helps us to remember a lot and understand a lot immunity uh, we will divide into adaptive and the innate immunity in adaptive immunity natural and the artificial in each of, among them passive and the active so in natural in, uh, naturally acquired immunity uh, the passive immunity is mainly from the mother and active immunity that we will get from the infection and in artificially acquired type of immunity uh, we will uh, get the passive immunity from the antibody transferred uh, through the uh, iv or any other route and active immunity through the immunization this is the end of the video if you have any doubt please drop down them in the comment box we will see you soon take care